Hey again, everybody. Chris here. Blythe. Wonderful Blythe here. Um, what's this? What? A different website than we would normally use? Uh, so Blythe, are, have you heard about this before? I have not. It looks pretty cool though. So uh, there's an organization that I'm a part of, which is the Partnership for the... This is, this is a long title, so hold on tight. The Partnership for the Integration of Computation into Undergraduate Physics. And so, uh, so technically this is an undergrad physics site, um, but this is uh, one of the more simpler and straightforward activities here. So a lot of the activities from the YouTube channel I've been posting here so that other physics people can find it. And they're a fun group of folks, and I get to see them uh, once a year at the uh, American Association of Physics Teachers Conferences. So there, there's the AAPT. AAPT shout out, woo! Um, and so this is their website that kind of uh, has, I think there's like 75 different coding activities. And so if you like the stuff on, on our YouTube channel and you're like, I want to dig, sink my teeth into even more cool stuff, there's all kinds of fun things on this, on this site to check out. Um, now, what's the special thing about this coding activity, Bly, that makes it different from all the other coding activities that we've done so far? Well, there's a picture of a circuit there, which I don't think we've seen before. That's right. So, do you do much electronics in what you do? <laughs> no. No? I mean, I work on computers. Yeah. Yeah, me So, too. I rely on this technology. Um, <laughs> so, I, you know, I, I teach introductory electromagnetism. At, I, have you ever taught Physics 1251 as a grad student? I have not. No. What about 1201? I don't know. I've only taught mechanics. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, well, this, anyway, <laughs> this will be an adventure for the both of us. Um, but the idea here is that you have a, uh, if you want to, if you want to scroll down, we can get a bigger picture of that, of that circuit. Um, but here's, here's the picture of the circuit. So we've got, do you remember, you know what, you know what this symbol is? That's a battery. It's a battery. What's this symbol? It's a capacitor. Capacitor and this symbol. Resistor. Okay, so right now we have there's kind of a switch here, and it's and so the capacitor is connected to the resistor. Um, here's a quick question, Blythe. Mm -hmm. Can a battery charge up a capacitor if it's only connected to one end of it? No. No. So this is the most uninteresting thing that the circuit can do right now. <laughs> yes. Not much is not much is happening. So. In principle, you can charge up a capacitor. So I don't know if you've heard of, um, like, Porsche is making this electric car, and uh -huh. not only does it have a regular electric car battery, lithium ion, it also has a capacitor bank, so you can have this, like, burst of speed. And so uh -huh. they charge up all those capacitors, and then when you need it, it gets discharged. And so here's a capacitor here that we can potentially charge it up if it's connected to the battery here. Um, and we just talked about capacitors, right? In the particle accelerator video. Yeah, that's true. So the the situation in the particle accelerator video, you have two charge plates that has charge on it, uh, and there's electric field in between the two of those. Um, so I guess the interesting twist here is that uh, capacitors not only can create an, an electric field, it can also store energy. And, and so when we charge this capacitor up, it's going to sort of store energy on it. Until what happens? We flip the switch. It's going to discharge it, right? Right. Yeah. So it's going to discharge it through <laughs> this resistor. So anyway, so the, so the, so what are we going to do first here? I think we just, I think we can just kind of look at the demo, kind of okay. like what we're trying to, what we're trying to do here. Okay. So here's the demo. So right now it's not very interesting. So we press C to connect it to the battery. Yeah, that's right. So if you look at the direction here, so now we connected it to the battery. Now, now what happened here? It charged the capacitor. Yeah. So this orange line here Pretty much instantaneously. Okay. used to be down at zero, but now it's all mm -hmm. charged up now. Um, and so you pressed C to connect it to the battery, and then what? What does that say? It says we can press D to disconnect it. Okay. So now it has charged. Okay. Flip it over, and then all of a sudden the charge gets depleted on that capacitor, mm -hmm. and there's some amount of current now through through the resistor. Now it went rapidly to zero. Right. So what I, what I suggest is, yeah, if you can go ahead and refresh it and maybe do that quicker, okay. you can see it a little bit more easily. So C D. There you go. Ah. Uh. 
and so it rapidly kind of decays away. Mm -hmm. um, here's a question. So we charge up the capacitor, there is energy on that capacitor, uh, but then we discharge it so there's no more energy on it, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? No, no potential draft, right? That's right. Uh, where did the energy go? Heat? That's right. So it's uh, that energy is lost as heat to the resistor. The resistor is going to heat up. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's what that's basically what happens. Um, so so this is what we have, and there's a code for this, and we can check out the code. Now the challenge for the code is that we what we want to do is we want to add a resistor right here. Is the goal. Um, and so if you bring up the code, we can see see what that has. Um, by the way, if, if there's physics teachers watching, the nice part about the, uh, the pickup site is that, for one, you can search on uh, all the high school level activities or first year college activities just to find whatever you want to find there. Uh, it's also easy for, for high school physics teachers to get access to the solutions on the site. So there's password protected solutions that uh, both for this activity and, uh, as well as all the other ones. Um, so here's the code. Uh, so this looks a little different from uh, the codes we've been using because it, it's the first one that deals with circuits, right? Yeah. So, uh, so why don't you give us a tour of kind of what's, what's there? After I make this visible. So this is the, this Q here is the charge stored on the capacitor, which we initially start at zero because it's not connected to the battery. We initially don't have current going and nor a voltage drop across the capacitor. But the capacitor has this capacitance that describes um, how would you describe capacitance? Like the charge it can store per yeah, the, voltage? Yeah, the more, the larger the potential across the capacitor. So if you, if, if you hook up the capacitor to a battery, the larger the potential of a battery that you have, then the more charge that you, it can store on the capacitor. Makes sense. And then the V battery that is also a set value of 10 here, 10 volts. That's the voltage drop across the battery, or increase you can think of. Um, then we have these descriptors of our resistors. So right now we just have this one that is set up, which has a resistance of five ohms. R2 we're gonna introduce later, right? And right now we're starting out with batteries connected is false. So it looks like when we're entering this draw function, we are determining if one of these keys has been pressed, the C or the D, and therefore switching this variable to true or false based on that. So that's how we can toggle this different state of our circuit. And if the battery is connected, we see that there's no... So battery connected means the battery's connected to the capacitor. And so right. Uh, so all you have is a, a, a battery and a capacitor. Um, but the key thing there is that there's no resistance, at, le at least in the original version of the program, which is what we're looking at now, there's no resistance between the battery and the capacitor. Mm -hmm. uh, so as a result, the current is zero because in an instant, all that charge jumps onto the capacitor, basically. Um, now we're gonna have to change that in a minute, um, but that's that's what it means in, if the battery is connected. Um, right, the resistor that we have going, it's not in that loop with the with the battery. Initially, it's not. In, initially, it's down here, mm -hmm. right? Because the battery is disconnected. See, so it says battery is not connected. Um, so this is all where all the fun stuff is for this. Right. Program, yeah. <laughs> right. So this is pretty, you know, this part's pretty simple because 
if you have the capacitor hooked up to a battery, well then the, and there's no resistance, then the, the voltage of the capacitor is equal to the voltage of the battery. Mm -hmm. uh, the current is zero, and the charge on the capacitor is just the capacitance times voltage of the battery. By the way, that Porsche uh, capacitor array thing, the larger the capacitance, the more energy you can store. So that's another way of thinking about the capacitance as well. But anyway, things are pretty simple with this part. Uh, they get more fun with, <laughs> yeah. with this part. So it looks like there we have this current from the capacitor. And we also have charge being depleted from the capacitor as, as time goes on. So we have this Q that we're subtracting this I times dt value. And then the voltage across, across the capacitor changes with that um, changing charge storage. That's right. So the, the, the charge you get on the capacitor is the capacitance times whatever voltage that you have. Uh, so therefore, the voltage on the capacitor is equal to the charge divided by the capacitance. Um, and so in this part of the code, uh, you know, we're going to run this over and over and over again. And so the first thing we do is we calculate what the current is. And here, it's the, the best way to think about it is that the capacitance is kind of acting like a battery. So if all you had was a battery and a resistor, mm -hmm. you'd say, well, what's the current? Well, it's the voltage of the battery divided by the resistor. Well, now the, the battery is kind of the capacitor. And so the current uh, is the voltage of the capacitor divided by the, the resistance. So the more resistance you get, the less current, right? Mm -hmm. So it's going to discharge slower. And then once you know the current, you know that over that time step, how much charge you're going to lose from that capacitor. Um, so you lose a little bit of charge, and then what you have to do is you have to recalculate what the voltage on the capacitor is. Uh, because the next time around, you're going to use it here again uh, to, to calculate what the new current is, and so on and so forth. Right, it's not being held constant by battery. Right. Now here's the fun thing. Do you so Blythe, you've taken like all the math classes that a person has to take to get a PhD in physics. Do you yeah. see any calculus <laughs> here at all? I do not. I see very simple, you know, additions and subtractions depending on the state of our circuit. Right, so that's what I love about this activity is there's no there's no calculus involved. Mm -hmm. Even even in the part we're gonna have to change this part in a second. Uh, but we're not, we don't actually need any calculus to do that. Um, so that's, so this is kind of the, the main chunk of the program. The rest of this yeah. stuff is all just kind of details. So uh, I don't know if you want to say a word about what's below that. Well, I noticed up here we have this image that's loaded, presumably uh -huh. for the circuit. Um, and then it looks like we can display The charge and the current. Yep. Yeah. So this is the graph that we're we're plotting, and, and this oh, okay. this does this code look familiar at all from the spring? Remember the spring activity? Oh, that's right. Uh huh. We had a little graph in the corner as well. Yeah, basically the same code from that. Now, if you want to write it to the terminal, uh, you can uncomment this line of code. So, so I don't know if you want to just uncomment that real sure. quick. Sure. And then normally we tell you guys to sort of minimize this thing on the bottom. But there's this little tiny arrow, that uh, gray arrow that, that, that Blythe just clicked. So normally this is not, normally this, this we don't use this too much, but uh, with this print command, um, you, if you want to press play, it will yeah. tell us what the charge is on the capacitor's function time. So what is it saying? Oh, okay. So you, you, connected it to the battery, and now it goes from, so it started at zero, mm -hmm. and then it very quickly went to 3.75, so on and so forth. So anyway, so if you want to know what the charge is on the capacitor, you can check it here. Um, if you're not interested, then that's fine. <laughs> but later on in the activity, it'll, it'll be helpful to do that. Um, so I think we're ready to go to the next step. I can um, say deep. Uh, so if you want to click on the, the tab that we were looking at before. Right. 
so the so the goal here is to is to change the circuit so so there's a resistor here. Mm -hmm. See that? There we go. So originally there wasn't a resistor here. We're going to call this R two. We're going to call the other one R one. Um, and so uh, the first step to changing the code so there's a resistor there is to change the picture. <laughs> so that's that's the easy part. Got to keep your visuals maintained. Yeah, so all you got to do is go into the code and, and just add this underscore v2 to the file extension. And it should show up. So that's supposed to be any of the program. Stand back here. Let's go over here. v2. So that's the image it loads when it's disconnected and connected. Yep, so I'm just going to load a different image. There we go. Yeah, no, okay. And so, and that'll work. You can hit C and D and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, now, the, the next thing we got to do is we have to change this if statement for. Uh, for what happens in, in different situations. Um, and I think it has some advice on what to do, actually. So, you see here. Mm -hmm. Oh, the other thing is to actually give R2 a value. Forgot about that. Um, so, what's the value it says there? I can't read it. It says to change the 0 to 3. Okay. So, there it is, changing 0 to 3 there. And then it's still 5. Okay. You can change it to whatever you want, but just for to have some values to work with there. And so then, this is the new advice for the if statement. It's a little bit different than what we had before. Mm -hmm. um, so what you might want to do is you might want to just highlight the code that's here. Is this code any different on the bottom? No. By the way? No. So you can highlight that. Co Control C, copy it. And you're going to replace what's in that if statement, yeah. like so. So we're changing this battery is connected. Mm -hmm. of that. And so that we have this. Okay, but we're not done yet because clearly I <laughs> equals question mark, question mark, question mark. The editor does not like that. Yeah. So the thing we added is we added Q plus equals I dt current times the time step. Um, where have where we seen that before? Key, um, which part? Oh, you well, see it? right. Instead of it discharging, I like get it's here. It's charging. Right, it's so, charging up. so here we had a minus sign, so the, the charge is decreasing, right? Because mm -hmm. we had it charged up and it's depleting. Here, there's no minus sign, which just means that we're going to charge it up. The, the, the charge is going to get more and more positive, uh, at least until the current goes to zero. Right. And then instead of setting Q equals C times V, now we're going to do basically the same thing we did down here, which is that the voltage on the capacitor is equal to Q over C. Mm -hmm. So basically, we change it so it's remarkably similar to, to this down here now, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. The only question is what do we put in these question marks? Because clearly, yeah, the code is not liking these question marks, <laughs> right? There's a bunch of red there. Um, so uh, yeah, what do we put in those question marks? So I think the best way to answer that question is to go to the glass board and think about this for okay. for a minute. Um, so leave that as a brain teaser, and we'll we'll transition to the glass board. All right.